This one is a transverse section of microsporangium. So here, transverse section, transverse section, the microsporangium or anther that is a circular in outline, right? So here, first the outermost layer of microsporangium is called as the cells are rectangular in shape. outermost layer is the epidermis so epidermis is involving in protection as well as the dehiscence of anther right so this is outermost layer now it is called as what epidermis epidermis so all the cells are closely associated they are tabular or rectangular without intercellular space and it is involving in protection as well as the dehiscence of anther See some plants like Orsitobium. Orsitobium. In this Orsitobium, Orsitobium microsporangium, the epidermis or epidermal epidermal cells are containing fibrous layer. Some fibrous thickenings are there. Fibrous thickenings are there. So this Orsitobium. Due to presence of fibrous thickenings, the Arsitobium epidermis is called as exothecium. Exothecium. Right? Exothecium. We are calling it as a exothecium, the Arsitobium microsporum. So here that is epidermis, and below the epidermis, we can see single layered cells, also same tabular. Closely associated, these cells, this layer is called as endothecium. Is that endothecium? Now, endothecium also involving in protection as well as a dehiscence of anther. So here, endothecium cells are containing alpha cellulosic fibers. Alpha cellulosic fibers, which on endothecium. So these alpha cellulosic fibers are hygroscopic in nature. In the maturity, what happens? The alpha cellulosic fibers will lose water, and here the microsporangium will be open. That means the dehiscence. So dehiscence of anther or microsporangium can be done with the help of endothecium because they are containing alpha cellulosic fibers. Alpha cellulosic fibers. So that the endothecium it is also called as fibrous layer. Endothecium also called as fibrous layer, right? And below the endothecium, we can see one, two, three layers. One, two, three layers. Now the layers are called as what? Middle layers. What are they? Middle layers. So here. One, two, three layers. They are called as what? Middle layer. So middle layers are present. Now middle layers are. They are not permanent, so that they are also called as a epimeral. Epimeral. So middle layers are not permanent. That means in the maturity they will be degenerated. So that the middle layers are called as a epimeral, or they will be shrivel. Shrivel at maturity. That means degraded in the maturity. Shrivel or ephemeral, right? And next one below the middle layer. So middle layer is also involving in what? Involving in uh, protection plus dehiscence of anther. Which one? This epi, uh, middle layer. So below the middle layers, we can see the cells. The cells are called as the layer is called as the tapetum cells. What is that? Tapetum cells. So these tapetum cells are having more than one nuclei. More than one nuclei. This is a tapetum cell. Now, what is the function of this tapetum? So generally, it surrounds the sporogenous tissue, which is present in the center, homogeneous layer that is a sporogenous tissue. And this tapetum is involving in the nourishment to the developing pollen grains and microspores. See tapetum. When we see the tapetum, it is of two types. One is Amoeboid tapetum. 
अमीबाइड टपेटम एंड सेकंड वन इज सेक्रेटरी टपेटम तो अमीबाइड टपेटम व्हाट इट विल डू जनरली दिस अमीबाइड टपेटम इज इन्वॉल्विंग इन द नोरिशमेंट इन्वॉल्विंग इन द नोरिशमेंट यूज द न्यूट्रिएंट्स टू द डेवलपिंग पोलन ग्रेन राइट एंड सेक्रेटरी टपेटम इट सेक्रेट द सब्सटेंसेस सो व्हाट टाइप ऑफ सब्सटेंसेस कैन बी सेक्रेटेड फ्रॉम सेक्रेटरी टपेटम फर्स्ट वन इज दे प्रोड्यूस लिपिड रिच लिपिड रिच ग्रैन्यूल्स दे आर कॉल्ड एज यूबिश ग्रैन्यूल यूबिश ग्रैन्यूल्स आर प्रोड्यूस सो दिस यूबिश ग्रैन्यूल्स आर लिपिड रिच एंड दे आर मेड अप ऑफ पोरोपोलनिन दे कंटेन पोरोपोलनिन तो पोरोपोलनिन इज वन ऑफ द हार्डेस्ट और टफेस्ट मटेरियल इन द नेचर नो एंजाइम विल डिग्रेड दिस पोरोपोलनिन दिस पोरोपोलनिन इज इन्वॉल्विंग इन द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ एक्साइन ऑफ पोलन ग्रेन एक्साइन ऑफ पोलन ग्रेन विल बी मेड बाय पोरोपोलनिन सो दैट द पोलन ग्रेन्स कैन बी प्रिजर्वड एज अ माइक्रोफॉसिल्स इट कैन नॉट बी डिस्ट्रॉयड राइट so that is the secretory which one the lipid rich humic granules can be produced from the secretory tapetum and next one is pollen kit so pollen kit is what that is a oily and sticky material or substance around the pollen grain it's called as a pollen kit it is made up of chemically that is a lipid plus plus carotenoids so lipids carotenoids so be the chemical nature of pollen kit is what that is oily and it is a lipid and carotenoid made up of lipid and carotenoid so this pollen kit is involving in the pollination how in the entomophilus plant if pollen surface the pollen grain surface is sticky then easily they can be stuck to the uh, pollinators right further this pollen kit is involved that is oily and sticky layer around the surface of pollen right and next third one is an enzyme that is a calase enzyme So calase enzyme that is produced from where from the secretory tapetum it it acts on callose callose is a cement like material which is involving in the formation of tetraeds isn't it now tetraeds nothing but that is a group of four pollen grains right the four pollen grains are microspores are arranged they are united so now these four pollen grains are attached by this callose during maturity what happens the callose wall is dissolved degraded by the enzyme callase and the tetraeds will become monads but that is that they will become pollen grain four pollen grains are released from the one tetraed right so this is about the secretory tapetum now below the tapetum we can see the homogeneous tissue all cells are similar homogeneous tissue now that homogeneous tissue is called as sporogenous tissue is there which one porogenous tissue now porogenous tissue is a homogeneous tissue which is surrounded by tapetum right and this porogenous tissue what is the function of this porogenous tissue it is involving in the formation of microspore mother cell so here primary porogenous porogenous tissue primary porogenous tissue right this primary porogenous tissue is forming porogenous tissue now this porogenous tissue is differentiated into mmc that is what microspore mother cell now this microspore mother cell involving uh, undergo meiosis due to meiosis microspores are produced microspores nothing but the microspores in the form of a tetraed right after that microspores they will become pollen grain right so this porogenous tissue is giving rise to microspore mother cell now microspore mother cell undergoing meiosis to form four microspores they are the tetraeds now all the tetraeds are separated by the enzyme callase so that they will become microspore that is a pollen grain so pollen grains are produced from this porogenous tissue now this is a structure of transfer section of microspore and see uh, here this alpha cellulosic fibers is very important and another name of endothelium is what fibrous layer and see exothelium also there exothelium is present in the acetobium anther that is fibrous thickening is also present in the epidermis of acetobium that is called as a exothelium and endothelium alpha cellulosic fibers and next ephemeral or shrivel which layers in the microsporangium or ephemeral or shrivel they are what 
they are middle layers, they are not permanent, right? So this is the structure of microsporan. 